gonna get started. So I'm gonna take over on a little bit more from last week. Um, a bit of information about because we were using the generative instruments and a uh, generative drone creator and using the operator synthesizer, which is a FM or frequency modulation synth. We're only going to do about five or ten minutes of this, just as an introduction, and uh, then I'll do the roll, and then we'll get into the other subject, the, um, uh, what do you call it, the network protocols. The thought being, I had a few people ask me questions about some of the synthesis stuff, so I would, I thought I'd cover it off to, because um, they were good questions. So, the main one that we were talking about, or I was talking about with people, is this guy here. And this is what makes it an FM synthesizer, the ability for one oscillator, to basically control or change the sound of one of the other oscillators. So if we have it set up like this, okay, what that means is we have four oscillators here and I'll click play on my clip. There's just one note. And basically it means that it's like hearing four channels of oscillators. So there's one oscillator turned on, I'll turn on the next one. It's actually set to the same. It's set to the same waveform, which is a sine wave. So when we introduce this other oscillator, it does nothing but increase the amplitude, and you'll see the sine waves here grow. So that's we're just painting with the same color. If we were to go and change this such that this little yellow guy was modulated by this these other ones, now you'll see that the waveform. is actually fundamentally changed, and along with it, the sound is fundamentally changed. So the way we talk about these two waveforms is this is the, the carrier, or the main waveform, the one down the bottom here, at the end of this whole channel. And these ones above it are called the modulators, which are just changing the sound of it. So rather than adding waveforms together, what we've got here is this waveform is being changed by these, and depending on which waveforms I have here, like a square one, uh, sorry, it needs to go through the whole chain, but I'll show you, I've got one of these modulators, there we go. In this one, all three modulate this one. So I turn that up, it changes it. I've, this is set to a square wave. And you can hear and see the changes that it's creating. If I go back to having them all set in parallel so that none of them modulate each other, as I turn these guys up, it changes the sound but in a different way. That's the square wave, this one is the sine wave. And you can hear, I'm just putting them side by side. They're not actually changing each other. What we're hearing is two waveforms in parallel. So this is all operators, all of the oscillators are heard in parallel. And this guy here, they're all heard in series. So this means that everything above this, in the colors here you see, is modulating the last one. Changing the, the timbre fundamentally and the waveform. Here I'm using a sine wave as the carrier and as well as that, I'm using a sine wave to modulate it. I could modulate it with just about, well, I can modulate it with anything. So I'm gonna go back to a sine wave for the, the carrier wave and the modulators I've got here is a sine wave, but I'm gonna change that to say a saw. And as I turn it up, you'll hear and see it getting modulated. So you'll notice, especially in the frequency spectrum, that when you modulate things, you're adding harmonics above the fundamental. So you're adding more treble and it's getting more complex in the bottom end, in the top end, sorry. And you'll see there, the spikes, they go right up, reach up. The more and more I bring up the modulator, and so interestingly, if I was to go and cut all of that treble out by using a low pass filter, you'll see two things happen. It becomes more like a sine wave again. Up here you see, 
It's a modulated sine, sine wave. I'm going to turn it down a bit, see if I can get it back to a perfect... There we go. We've got a sine wave. And all I've done there, it, without the high-pass filter, it's a distorted sine wave. So you can, it's a two-way street. By adding modulation, I create harmonics and it changes it from it being a sine wave to another, a sine, another waveform, a complex waveform like that. So what I'm doing is modulating and it's adding harmonics. We see more treble stuff. We see a distorted waveform. But if I go the other way and use this for subtractive synthesis, I can subtract sound from it, take away all those harmonics. And even though I'm generating this with a complex routing, with a carrier and a modulator, I actually get back to the same point where I've got a sine wave. Take out the treble. Do you get what I mean? So you got any questions about that and why why we would do this? No? The reason why you do it is to get different sounds. If uh, that's my original sound, I can change it and add more treble, more harmonics. So what I'll show you quickly before we get into our other subject is something I'm not sure if you're aware of, but um, the other way of changing the harmonic spectrum of a sound, you've, everyone's used a limiter here. What happens, what, have, anyone can tell me what a limiter does to the sound? It changes its dynamic range. It changes the dynamic range? No. It's a gatekeeper, I guess, that stops it. That's right. But not only does it change dynamic range, it changes the fundamental uh, timbre and frequency response of the sound. So you can see there, I've got my sine wave. If I go and it's a very pure sine wave. This stuff up here is noise from the digital synthesis process. And interestingly, in this guy, this synthesizer, you see we've got interpolation and anti-alias. Interpolation increases the accuracy of the maths. And when you turn it off, you'll see that all of a sudden we've got much more top end treble noise in the synthesis process. This increases the processing power, but it makes it a more pure sound. So you can see that that's a little interesting artifact and anti-aliasing will do the same thing. Turning the anti-aliasing off, again, smooths out the top end response a little bit, using more processor power and more maths. But the other thing that not sometimes people aren't aware of, and it seems that you're all in this boat, is that when you add limiting to a sound, you're actually adding a whole lot of treble to the sound. And the minute I reduce the gain by any kind of dB, the point at which the circuit kicks in, you'll see something cool happen to the spectrum. There it is. All of a sudden we get a whole lot more harmonics in the top frequency, these guys along here. And it's sometimes a little bit clearer if I go down to a lower one. So we've got a low guy there. See, I was wondering why it's making no difference, and it's because the spectrum is after the limiter. So now the spectrum is before the limiter. At the point at which I start limiting, aha. Uh -huh. So that is only the very pro the first point eclipse like that. You see all of these new harmonics. So this is the original without any limiting. Then we put a dB of limiting on it. We got all of this extra treble and notes above it. And as you increase it, you'll notice that these sounds actually become almost as loud as the original one. So if I turn it up, which I may or may not be able to achieve that way. It goes from being, that's gonna be loud, so.
So there's your pure tone. There it is with limiting. And the more you limit it, the more distorted it, get, distorted it becomes. And the more harmonics you get. So whenever you put a limiter on anything, not only are you affecting the dynamic range, but you're also introducing octaves above in terms of harmonics and stuff like that. So if you want a bass drum to be uh, more present in the mids and more crunchy in the treble, you can do it with either the mids or treble on a sound, but you can actually do it with limiting and compression as well. Can you see a visual difference if you use a different kind of limiter? So if you use you like can. Of and if I use something like, and I'll show you that quickly and then we'll move on. If I use the native instruments, guys, like their emulations of the LA-2As and things like that, I'll take this limiter out of the circuit. And you'll notice actually that as soon as you turn this, this guy on without even any limiting, that's it without it. And as soon as I turn it on, all those extra harmonics, that's before I even limited, that's just running it through the circuit. And then if I increase some peak reduction, those become more pronounced and the more I reduce it, the closer the harmonics get to the fundamental. So the more and more you're hearing these extra, extra tones above it. Uh, would you mind putting the oscilloscope Get it afterwards, yep. Yeah. I can do that. And I'll just change the gain as well. With the oscilloscope, I'll show you. Sometimes it's a case of getting a nice frequency that sits there without oscillating too much. There we go, there's a great one. So as we introduce this, it goes from being, I'll try and gain match as best I can. Not the most accurate oscillator, but it becomes more square. And as I introduce more and more clip peak reduction, it'll eventually, you can see the tops are really getting clipped there. If I put it to limit rather than compress. But the interesting thing is not only this guy, but also down here, you see the amount of harmonics above our original signal. It's crazy and you can hear more of it. It's compressed, but you, there's more. There's more sound there. It's not only the original, the low pitched mm, sound, but now we're starting to hear these octave above, and that's a fifth above here, and all of that. So there's a little bit of stuff about how to change sounds in terms of FM synthesis. We do it by modulating it, so that all of these guys are going to contribute to this sound and change it, or we can do it by painting alongside it where they're not modulating each other, they're just adding sound. And then the way you know that you're in the adding sound mode, you've got all of the modulators, all of the oscillators are like that. And when I, if I switch this to the same one, the sign, we're both on sign here, take out the compressor, which is distorting it a lot. Set it to the same note. There's two an octave apart. But at that point, yeah, when I put these oscillators on, the extra one, it just increases the volume. It doesn't change the sound at all because I'm painting with the exact same color, a sine wave on top of a sine wave. Side by side, it's just gonna increase the, the volume by 3 dB. As soon as I change these, it changes the sound, but that's not really, well, that isn't FM synthesis or FM modulation because I'm not selecting one of these algorithms that allows these to change the sound of each other. So one of them would be, I want B to change A. So anything with A on the bottom, A on the bottom like that with the green guy above it. As I turn this up, it'll fundamentally change not only the, the waveform, but also the harmonic response. And the great thing is in this program, you can change it such that this has got a separate um, envelope. So I could have it so that that sound comes in over time. And it's modulating it like that. It doesn't start off straight away. Or you could have it such that it only affects the very front, the attack of the note. And then it dies away straight away by reducing the system. So 
So now the only bit of the note that's been modulated is the very first one. So that's why you can create percussive attacks to sounds and key noises in pianos and stuff like that. <laughs> 